This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex topics simply for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash H-A-I. Are you tired of your country's government never working the way it's supposed to? You've tried everything. Voting, protesting, posting angry memes, and yelling at strangers on the internet, but things still don't ever seem to turn out how you want. Well then you should try… Belgium. The country with no government at all. Located conveniently between charming snail-eating France, not fascist anymore Germany, weed-friendly the Netherlands, and whatever the hell Luxembourg is, Belgium has all the advantages of being a country without any of that pesky government to get in the way. Just think what you'll be able to do when there aren't any laws at all. You can drive as fast as you want, never pay taxes, and put out hits on all the commenters who called you a oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm getting word that there are still laws and stuff in Belgium. But why? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Caretaker government. What's. Mm hmm. How many waffles? Oh, wow. Okay, got it. Alright, guys. So it turns out that even though Belgium doesn't technically have a government, it still has, like, a government. I'll explain, I guess. So technically, Belgium is a constitutional monarchy, which means formally, executive power is held by this guy, Philippe. But like most modern non-Saudi Arabian and non-Burger monarchs, Philippe rules Belgium the same way Mickey Mouse rules Disney World, as a mostly powerless figurehead. Everyone knows the real power in Disney World is Clarabelle the Cow, and the real power in Belgium is the 150-seat Chamber of Representatives. In order to have a functional government, 76 of the 150 seats in the chamber must agree to form a governing coalition so they can then do all the classic government stuff — appoint ministers, pass new budgets, pass new laws, oppress the proletariat, and serve as the collective man that we collectively must stick it to. But in Belgium, forming a government can be almost as difficult as explaining in a 5-minute YouTube video why it's so difficult to form a Belgian government. To that end, before we move on, you need to know that Belgium has two distinct regions, each with a different people, different language, and a different very silly sounding name. The Walloons live in Wallonia and speak French, and the Flemish live in Flanders and speak Dutch. There's also a few people here who speak German, but much like Belgium does, we'll pretend they don't exist. The political scene is fractured along the lines of the language communities, which has led to there being two sets of each type of party. There's a French-speaking Socialist Party, and a Dutch-speaking Socialist Party, a French-speaking Liberal Party, a Dutch-speaking Liberal Party, etc. The point is, because things are so fractured, Belgium has 12 parties that hold elected seats, none of which hold more than 25 of the 150, meaning that to form a governing majority, you have to get members from at least four parties to come together. So here's what happened. In 2018, Belgium did have a government led by Prime Minister and discount Stanley Tucci, Charles Miquel. He had put together a center-right coalition between his liberal French-speaking party and the Flemish conservative, Christian, and nationalist parties, but then the Flemish nationalist party left his coalition over a dispute over immigration police because, you know, nationalism, which meant no more majority, which meant no more government, which also meant no more Prime Minister Charles Miquel, who actually could have stayed but left after he was offered a job as president of the EU's European Council, which is cooler and more prestigious and comes with this invisible pet monkey, and there's been no Belgian government sense. So, you may ask, if Belgium has had no government for over 600 days, what's going on? Is there chaos, anarchy, crime running rampant, cats marrying dogs, adults eating kid meals? Well, mostly everything is normal. You see, all the laws currently on the books still apply, so the bureaucracy of the state — stuff like public schools, courts, public transportation — are all still happening as usual. Funding is handled by essentially continuing the budget from the previous year. Basically, everything just stays exactly the same. Politically, this is all overseen by what's called a caretaker government, which is led by Sophie Wilms of the liberal French-speaking reformist party, who serves as a super limited prime minister, basically just making sure everything doesn't fall apart while the parties sort out a new coalition. Wilms has the power to do basic bureaucratic oversight, but without a governing majority, she can't pass any new legislation, appoint new officials, handle the budget deficit, or even fund the acquisition of another invisible pet monkey. By and large, though, the Belgian people don't really seem to care that they don't have a government. There was even an election in May of 2019 to try to sort things out, but it mostly just gave more seats to members of a super far-right party, which, as history has shown, is always a super cool thing to do that has no bad consequences. Things did change, though, in March of 2020 when something called the… Uh, the Conoravinris or something hit. Wait, there's a virus going around? Why isn't the media covering this? Typical. 
Anyways, this Coors Light virus required Wilms to be given more power, so 10 of the 12 major parties came together to grant her special emergency powers for three months, allowing her to take actions without the approval of the chamber. Doing this meant forming what's called a minority government, which is sort of a government but also sort of isn't, and either way, those powers expired in June, which put the Belgians back where they started. On August 3rd, Belgium set the world record for longest time without a government at 591 days, beating out the previous record held by Belgium's bitter rival, also Belgium, who had gone 590 days without a government from 2010 to 2011. With each passing day, that new record continues to be extended while the country of Belgium waffles on what to do next. I don't know how to solve Belgium's non-government crisis, but maybe I don't have to. Maybe someone could develop some complex algorithm that could sort out the whole thing, which I'm assured is very possible, and maybe that person could be you, because you learned how to write algorithms by using Brilliant. Learning new stuff can be hard, but we all know that the best way to do it is by actively engaging with the material and solving problems, and that's what Brilliant does. Brilliant focuses on breaking down subjects in STEM into approachable, bite-sized chunks, and every course has interactive challenges to make your learning active. To learn more about algorithms, or neural networks, or just regular algebra, or a ton of other stuff, go to brilliant.org slash HAI where you can sign up for free. Plus, if you choose to get a premium subscription, you'll get 20% off by being one of the first 200 to go to brilliant.org slash HAI.